Hi. Um, some people have seen my videos before, but I decided that I would go a different angle with this one, and I wanted to talk to people about young divorce. This is something that uh, I really wanted to create this video for as if I was recording it for myself about three and a half years ago. Just something I wanted to talk about, give my story, maybe something that people can relate to. So here it goes. When I was in high school, I met this girl and I thought that she was the most, be like, most beautiful girl I've ever seen in my entire life. And I never forgot that. I was dating her friend at the time um, and I was just taken back by this girl. And then later in college, I ran back into her and I still was like, wow, who is this girl? I knew who she was. But in my mind, never would she be interested in a guy like me. And it just so happened that things started to move forward. We hung out a little bit more. Um, I did have some red flags along the way. There were some times where she picked, uh, she had two boyfriends when I was like telling her, like I was pursuing her. And she had two boyfriends at the time and it, it was never me. So I probably should have taken that as a red flag that maybe I wasn't exactly what she was looking for. So, but after that time went on, I kept pursuing her, um, I wooed her, and we began to start dating. Um, we dated for about a year and a half, two years before I was like, this is the girl I definitely want to spread my life with, and I proposed. Um, during that relationship, we had so much in common, and we barely ever fought. That was like one thing that really stuck out to me is that throughout our whole relationship, there was nothing, like I wasn't getting red flags, I wasn't scared, I was pretty confident in where we were going. Um, we got married about a year after the engagement and uh, the wedding was, it was amazing, it was very amazing, but the wedding got very big uh, very quickly and it became a lot and now that I'm looking back after the fact, it definitely, the idea of the wedding kind of trumped the purpose of the wedding. Um, and that, beware when you're getting married. Make sure that focus is still on the purpose of why you're there in the first place and not everything around you. So we got married and uh, things were going pretty well. I felt like they were going pretty well. Not the perfect couple, but uh, you know, I was, I, was, I was happy, I knew that I was happy. About seven months in, um, my wife, she kind of just started getting disconnected. Um, there was about a two week period that I can just distinguishly me uh, remember that she stopped talking to me. It was just like, I was there in the house, in our house, and I was almost like I was a stranger. She wouldn't speak to me. It was just like so awkward. And I finally had to step up and say something. She had told me about a conversation that she had with her mom uh, prior about, I guess she was having second thoughts about how things were supposed to be as a newlywed couple. One big mistake that we made, and I will stand by this forever, is that we bought a house that we could afford, but it kind of uh, overtook everything else in our life. As a newlywed couple, we weren't able to go on that many dates, do these exciting things. Um, and that definitely, I think, played a part in, uh, you know, things just going in a direction that they maybe shouldn't have. But once uh, I had this conversation with my wife and I was just so confused and I was just trying to get some insight on where, what was going on in her head, because in my head I was really happy. Um, she basically told me that she was unhappy. She didn't, kind of indirectly was saying that she didn't know if really this was what she wanted. It, she, it wasn't how she had planned it to be. It was only seven months, but um, I was in grad school at the time, so we were both very busy. And that silence and that awkwardness kind of just persisted. Um, it started to freak me out. I was really worried about where the relationship was gonna go. So I was like, I need to figure out some things. I did Google searches. I was like, are these red flags that I'm seeing, are they normal for a first year of marriage? and I decided that I was gonna seek some help. Um, I had a service at work that gave free counseling for me, and it could have been a couple situation. 
my wife was not interested in speaking to anybody. She was not interested in us doing that together. Um, and in general, she really wasn't uh, looking to fix the relationship at all. So I had went and met with this gentleman, uh, probably probably on and off for about a year uh, in the long run. But um, he had kind of said that some of the red flags were just not your normal red flags. And that would just kind of freaked me out. But uh, I was I was all in. I wanted us to stay together. Um, I think that she was, was trying to almost convince me that it was a mutual like thing, but it wasn't. It wasn't at all. I was doing a lot of work to try to make things work. Um, I joined this group at my church and it really started to change me. There were so many things about being a husband that I had no idea about about honoring your wife and really serving her and serving her needs and serving the greater goods of your relationship. And I really fell off the rocker there. And not that I was a bad husband, but I was learning these things that would make me so much better. And I learned these things and I was telling her about them. And I was like, you know what? I haven't been all that I, that I could be or that I should be. And they, even, even that wasn't really, uh, wasn't really helping. She, she wasn't really interested in, uh, implementing those things into our life and so I was going to group I was going there um, and things didn't really get better she started to pull back more and more and I was just getting very frustrated at this time um, a few sketchy things I use the word sketchy were happening she was uh, kind of staying out late at work um, she would go out with co-workers but she was never inviting me um, she would, uh, it was just very, there was no fight for our relationship at all from her. And then she started spending more time at work and work and work. And that just became kind of, it, when you're in a position where you don't know what's going on, you kind of search for those things. Um, I had known that she had a close relationship with her boss. And that was something that kind of threw me off for a while. I know that there was a moment when we were standing on our staircase and I just asked her if she was being unfaithful and she told me she wasn't. Uh, I was trusting and I believed her at the time somewhat. I was doing a little bit of detective work on my own all while this was happening. Nothing to the extreme. Um, I will never be that person. I will never be the one that I'm gonna trust whoever I'm with, I'm not gonna send somebody out to take pictures, anything. I was just doing little things around the house just to, it's more of observation. But I didn't think that things were right. Um, and I knew that they were spending time together. The way that she was treating me, the way that she turned herself off, in my mind, there's only one way somebody does a complete 180 with their feelings, and that's if there's somebody else out there. Um, even to this day, I do not know if she was unfaithful to me, but either emotionally or physically, in my mind, she was. There was just, um, I don't even know. It was just like, I felt it, and I, I felt like the, the way that I was being treated and the way that she was kind of disconnecting and where she was spending her time, it just didn't add up. Um, all this kind of came to a, a stomping ground where nothing seemed to be getting better. I was going to counseling alone. I really wanted our relationship to work, but there was nothing happening on this side. I was getting no help from her family, and I was just pretty much all by myself. So from there, I was stuck. I didn't know what to do because I was getting no help, but I still wanted our marriage to work. And in my head, I was like, as long as I'm doing exactly everything that I can to make it work, then that's all I can really do. And we kind of came to this point, maybe a month or two down the line, where our house was just like the worst place to be. It was super awkward. I didn't want to be there. She didn't really want me there. Um, I ended up having to move out of our, I, I moved into a different bedroom. It was just a toxic situation. And there was one day when we were having a conversation where I brought out this list of questions. And this is kind of, which was gonna help me see what kind of direction I could go in because I was so worried. And a couple of things on that list were, do you love me? Are you attracted to me? Do you wanna have kids with me? Do you respect me? And basically all these questions, I got the answer no. And from there, I was heartbroken, I didn't know what to do. And it kind of came to the point where 
she didn't want to be with me anymore. And I knew that, I felt that. Um, so we ended up doing, doing the process of going our separate ways. Throughout this time, I had gone to other groups, other counselors, and even when I moved out of the house into my parents' house, um, I was still trying to fight. Uh, I would try to meet with her. I had wrote her letters with just kind of saying where I've grown up, things in my life, how I would like the things to go, uh, if she's interested in, in talking things out, even still after I was out of the house and I still got the answer no. The one thing that I'll never forget is when I got an email that said, I moved on and I think you should too. To me, that, that just broke my heart. Um, I remember I titled the email, this is like the bottom of the ninth with two outs. Like, this is our last shot before we file these papers and we get separated and do all that stuff that I had no interest in doing. Um, but none of that worked. She wasn't interested. And I was going to have to go out in this world by myself. And that terrified me because to me, I was on that path that I always thought I would be on. I thought that I was going in a direction to where um, I was going to have everything that I wanted. So we did end up separating. We did go through the year long process of getting divorced. And it was just a terrible time for me. I joined this uh, divorce care group, which was like a 13 week group. Um, it was kind of weird. It was me and a bunch of more older people. And I got to hear all these stories, but it was definitely good. I got to get, get some of my things out. And then I had to go to another counselor because I was just, I didn't know how to move on. I didn't know how to evaluate the situation. I never got closer from my marriage. I never knew exactly why we were splitting up. I still don't really know that. But that takes me back to the being unfaithful part. My wife has been in a relationship with the guy that I called her out on on those stairs that day, basically since we've been separated. They've been together. So I may not know 100%, and I never claim to know 100%. I've never said that. Every time I've talked to somebody, I always do a disclaimer saying, I don't know, but these are the facts. If you can't see it, then, then I don't even know what else to say. But she's still with that guy, and if that's what she's supposed to be with, then that's what she's supposed to be with. But um, I never got any closure from that situation, and for like the past three years, it's really screwed with me. It's screwed with me getting in relationships. It screwed with me feeling worthy. I just was in a very bad place. So then I had to go to another uh, counselor. I was just like, I need your help. Help me evaluate this situation. Um, and I got some things, I learned some things about my relationship that I wasn't really aware of, but it was, uh, it was definitely helpful. It's definitely helpful to always have somebody there that you can bounce things off of and talk about. If you're anything like me, I just run things through my head. I run things through my head. I have a photographic memory. I remember everything. So things that bother me can bother me continuously. Um, so now I'm getting divorced. I'm on my own. I have to go back into the dating world. I had no clue what I was doing. I had no desire to be there. I thought I'd be having kids soon. And now I'm here looking, what's a Tinder? <laughs> but I was not afraid. I was ready to go. When as soon as, I, as soon as everything went south, I was like, I have to go, go, go. I have this timeline in my life that I still want to abide by. I want to get going. I want to meet somebody that really loves me, that really wants to be with me. Uh, big mistake. I was not ready to date. I was not ready to meet people. I was not emotionally available. And I barely am now. Um, but I have made great steps and I am ready to take those risks to go past some of my fears. But if you're watching this and you're just getting out of a relationship, wait, 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 wait. You need to emotionally heal, really process. And if you haven't got closure, try if you can. I wasn't able to get that. Um, I tried, I promise you. But I would definitely try that. Talk to people, get things out in the open. Um, and something that I've recently to be able to deal with in the last probably six months or so is really battle with the concept of forgiveness. Really just forgiving her for not holding up her end of the deal, not being a partner, not honoring her vows. Uh, I thought that we were gonna. I thought we were gonna do it forever. I really did. I was in it and. So I recently, I got to the point where I was like, I can't, 
I can't let this hold me back anymore. If I don't forgive her, it's just something that's gonna draw me down in my future relationships. It's something that I'm gonna think about, and it's really just not gonna, it's not helpful for me to move forward. Maybe this other guy's really who, who she's supposed to be with. I don't know. Um, but I didn't get to the point where I could forgive her. I could forgive her for just not being who she promised that she would be. So if you're out there and you're watching this and you're like, oh, that's my story. And at the point, I was 25, 26 of that when I was getting divorced. And now I'm 29 and I'm still just like finding myself, finding my place where I, where I should really be. The people that I really should be looking for. Um, another thing, people have a lot of things to say about online dating. In this world, in this age, your dating circle is very small and I found that out very quickly. There's only so many people people can introduce you to, there's so many, so many people that you work with. The potential is very little. Online dating is a very good tool to meet somebody that you wouldn't otherwise. So I would definitely, when you're ready, don't be afraid to get out there and find what you're looking for. Um, be intentional. That's like my goal now, just to be intentional. Don't sit at my house wondering what could happen, but to get out there and do things. Um, and really just make it, you know, go get that life that you, you thought you were going to have before. Uh, I don't really know um, what situations are people, but I feel like somebody out there has the same situation that I did, is in pain, is hurting, doesn't know where to go. Uh, feel free to message me on this uh, somehow on YouTube. I don't even know how that works. But yeah, I can, I can help talk about my experience. I know people are out there dealing with it. And there's people out there that are just like, I love this person. They don't love me back, but they did. They said they did. Um, but I just hope that people are out there healing, working towards forgiveness and working towards really going out there because everybody deserves their best. Everybody deserves to get exactly what they want and it's definitely out there. It just takes some time and I haven't found it yet, but I have seen it happen and I know it can happen. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope that maybe it affected somebody. Uh, in a good way and I just hope that just keep going keep going you will get to where you want to be and uh, yeah keep on going we're in this together and I hope you enjoyed this video